Hello, my name is David Benaim, and in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to do scenario building in Power BI. Could be useful for product mix, customer mix, forecasting, etc. So over here, I have a dashboard that has some scenario planning built in. So I can move this up and down. Right now, I'm forecasting I have 9,000 sales, and this is what my profits per country are going to be. I'm going to move this slider up and down and I can get different kinds of ranges. Now that is a way to change the totals, but I also have other types of scenario management. So this is a built-in feature using what if analysis here. And I'll show you that in a bit, but what that doesn't do very well is a change of product or customer mix like this. Because you end up needing to do one for every new table and it gets quite messy. So another scenario that I'll show you with this is how to do something along these lines where you can edit these numbers here. So I can choose numbers here and it will fall into that by country. And there'll be a another method to change these numbers. And then I'm going to also show you how to save scenarios. So let's say, for example, that we have different scenarios here. As you can see, this product mix is changing. And let's get kicked off by using the built-in what-if parameter in the modeling tab of Power BI. So if I click in here, I can create a new what-if parameter. And I'm going to call this uh, fixed costs. I'm going to say this is a whole number, minimum of say 300 and a maximum of 1200 and it's going to go up in increments of 100. I'm going to have a default that is 400 here and I'm going to add a slicer to this page like that. Now on the basis of it, what it's done is it's added this new table that has two things. It has a table here with one column and it has a measure that's just showing me the value here. It uses the function called selected value and what it's saying, if I make that into a card, is that it is showing me whatever's in the list. However, if I go to the DAX, you can see that it's saying comma 400. So with this selected value, you have comma, column name slash alternative results, which is 400. So if I clear this slicer, the default is 400. And if I show you here what it's doing, if I go to what I just built, fixed costs, that has just generated this list. It uses a DAX function, generated series. You don't need to really understand that, but as you can see, starts at 300, ends at 1,200 in increments of 100, which is what I specified. How do I bring that into um, other calculations? What I need to do is I'm going to go to the measure that this does, which is profits, and I'm just going to replace Instead of fixed costs that I had there, I'm going to make this reliant. And this is going to be fixed cost value, which is the one that I just created. Enter it like that. And now if I move this up and down, you can see that these change as well. So now it's dependent based on what I change here. So that is using this value for fixed costs. And that's using the built-in methods. But it's not always very practical because you can only change one thing. And for every new thing you change, you need a new table. So this total sales value, this comes from a table that I've built, which is this one here. Total sales, again, generate series from 0 to 20,000 in increments of 1,000 and a measure that's associated with it, again, the selected value. So if you imagine, if I wanted to do this for customer mix, like I have here, it would be incredibly tedious to have to build one, two, three, 
six new tables and six new measures associated with them before I even get started in adapting the rest of my functions. So it's not a very practical use case for something like a customer or a product mix. So let's look at the data and then we'll drill down how that could be done better. So over here, I have same data. It's just showing it in a visual chart. By the way, if you want to know how to make this picture chart with images on the axis, I have another video explaining that that I'll link to here. So what's going on? I have this data. And the way that I calculate my profits is like this. So I have the total sales value, which is shown here. And that's multiplied by the mix, the customer mix, 20% for UK, 13% for France. It's multiplied again by the margin. So margin is just my sales minus my costs, and it's per unit. And then I subtract the fixed cost. And now this is looking at total sales times mix times margin minus fixed costs, which is D to get profits. This is a very simple model. If I show it to you, I just have these tables. They're all disconnected tables and the new one that I just built amongst fixed costs. All right, so let's look at the other ideas. The other two are both in Power Query. So here, I have the mix type that at the moment is dependent on a parameter. And that is using the edit parameters here. Now here I have 0.32 for the UK, as you can see, 22 for Spain over there. And if I change this to 0.3 and 0.2, press OK. I'm going to apply the changes that goes through the query editor. And as you can see, this is now mixing what I need there. This is useful because this is kind of checking that it adds up to 100%. For example, if I was to do here 0.35 and then apply changes, you'll see this adds to 105%, which is obviously incorrect. So how do I make those? Uh, I'm going to go to edit queries. And over here, you have your query editor, and there, here are the parameters. So to make new parameters, I'm going to go to the Home tab, Manage Parameters, and I'm just going to make some new ones. This is going to be UK, say, Mix, and this is going to be a decimal number with the current value of 0.4. And then keep adding them. So you can go to New. And you can go for Spain mix. And I'm going to say that this is going to be, again, a decimal number. And let's say 0 0.1. New again. So once you've got all of these, I would right-click them and make a new group. So these are going to be in the new mix group, like this. And then I'm going to go to my customers column, my main table. And I'm going to add a column, a conditional column that goes like this. If country equals UK, output is a parameter. I've just added the new ones, so I'll add the relevant mix ones. That's going to be this one. Add clause. If country equals France. Make sure you spell it correctly, then parameter France mix. Just the last one now, Poland. And then I would normally do an else to be a check. That way, if you've spelt it wrong, it's going to be very, very clear. Give it a name. So let's call this new parameter mix, like this. Define a data type, it's going to be a decimal uh, percentage to be more precise. And that refers to these ones. Then we can apply and close. And now it's giving me the new mix 
is this one. So if I say would add this to a table next to country, let's make it into a table like that. Be good to create measures, but we're going to do that a little bit later on. I just wanted to kind of show you. It adds to 0.89%, which is not what I want. So I'm going to edit parameters and the ones that say mix need an extra 0.11. So I'm going to make this one 0.22. And the ones that don't say mix <laughs> need to make sure they add to 100. So it's showing us like that. Once you've done it, you can apply the changes and that should add it up there. Now, how do you create this? So then I would create a measure. So I would say new measure to say mix added up equals sum of the new mix there. Make that a percentage to zero decimal places and make sure that this is then zero. Let's drag this into an empty part of the pane and make sure it's 100% there. So that's another way to do it. The third way to do it is also using Power Query. So if I go back into my query editor, I'm going to go to enter data. And here I'm going to write Poland, UK, France, Germany, Italy, Spain. And then this is country. And then mix from enter data like that. And this is just going to be 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, like that. This is going to be enter data new mix, because I already have one. This creates another table in Power Query, but I'm going to not enable load. And then I'm going to go back to my main customer table and I'm going to do a merge queries. I'm going to merge this one with the new one that I entered. Merge these three, make sure you're matching all the rows and then click expand. And we only want to take out the mix from enter data like this. Again, works best as a percent for data type and we're good to go. How do we then change them? So to change it, you have to go back to the query editor and then go to this one that I made, go to the source and click on the cog. And here you can type in whatever you want. This is okay, this method. I definitely prefer the parameters method, but this one is easier if you don't want to deal with having an extra six things here, because that can be a bit heavy on your query editor. Then you can load it to the data and it can go there. The last thing that I'm gonna show you is how to create this. So you have your scenario editor where you can choose between these things. So in this case, I have one that's returning the parameter amount, one that's returning the enter data amount, the original one that I did, not the brand new one, and one that's entered in just a fixed amount that I predefined. So how do I make this? This is another kind of disconnected table. So I go to enter data and I just type the names of the parameters in here. So. So scenario picker, and this is going to be from parameter, from enter data, or otherwise fixed like this. I'm going to call this uh, scenario type, press load. I don't need to edit that. And it just creates a very simple table with one column, this one. And that just has three values as I just entered now. 
Then the final thing we want to do is allocate these to the percent types. So to the parameters that's chosen. So let's add this as a slicer. And right now it's not doing anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a measure that is going to return something based on this. So I'm going to go to new measure. And I'm going to say chosen mix equals switch. And what I'm going to do with switch is I'm going to first go to selected value. With switch, you can't then enter a column name directly. You need to first tell Power BI how you want it aggregated, which in this case is going to be using selected value. And the scenario type, scenario picker, with selected value, we saw it earlier, you have your column name, an alternate result that's optional. I'm going to leave it blank for now. And then we go to our value. So comma, my first value in speech marks is going to be from enter data. And then I'm going to say the result is sum of from enter data. Tab, close that bracket, comma, value two. This is going to be from parameter, comma. And the result two is going to be a sum again of from parameter. And then I can choose a result three or an else. I'm just going to choose else, which is a sum of customer data. And it's going to be this one that I've already pre-assigned as a third scenario. Close my brackets twice. Go to modeling, make this a percent that is 0%. And then I can add it to the table. So chosen mix, I can add to this table here. And now I've changed my scenario picker. And as you can see, now it's swapping between the values depending on what that is. And I can change from parameter. I can change directly edit queries and edit parameters. And finally, I can change from enter data edit queries and enter data, click here, click the cog and amend the numbers that pop up like this over there. All right, so that's it for this video. It's definitely a longer one, but thanks for sticking with me. If you like this, then there's plenty more other videos on my channel. I have a lot of stuff on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint. I'm, vi I'm releasing about one to two videos a week at this stage. So Please like the video, share it if you want, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.